Council meetings are long and boring. Wouldn't it be great if they were short and unboring? This is why I have invented the five. Wait, did I hear ten? Ten minute meeting. All right, Ashland City Council meeting of December 20. This guy not here. Might be for the best. Uh, these and then two old councilors showed up. They were very old. Old councilors to say thank you to the other two old councilors who were leaving. This is their last meeting. These two were leaving. And one of the old councilors, old man Slattery, he said, uh, he goes, he goes, hey, I want to thank the winners and losers of the last election and thank the outgoing councilors. You leave an honorable legacy. And then another old kind of old man Rosenthal, very old. And he said, oh, I'm here to express appreciation for this one and that one. And I uh, admire you both. And Ashland owes you a debt of gratitude. And this one goes, oh, it's been a privilege to serve the city. Our council accomplished a lot. Let's make our kids proud of how we work together. Very nice. And this one goes, I want to leave you all with some advice. Oh, goody, unsolicited advice from Uncle Steve. So, uh, so he, he mansplained six aphorisms about life. Boy, this show is going to miss him, I'll tell you that. And then the city manager's report. City manager Joe Lassard, he looks a lot like this. He says, uh, he goes, January 23rd, there's going to be a special town hall meeting. And he mumbled vagaries about it. And my translation of Joe Lassard to English is... Monday, January 23rd at 5.30. At the Armory on Oak Street, the public is invited and elected officials will meet with them to discuss priorities for the upcoming budget. There will be group discussions and public voting and stuff. It's not all dialed in, but finally a town meeting, and that's a good thing, you know? Uh, and then he says, uh, he goes, oh, uh, January 6th is a strategic budget meeting, and February 6th is a railroad yard discussion that has been postponed. Uh, and then May 4th, the first official budget meeting is uh, going to happen. And January 17th, there's a tentative mayor, mayor state of the city address. And this one goes, oh, hey, hey, the 5G ordinance has been pushed again and keeps getting pushed. The, the 5G attorney who made a presentation to the uh, city wants to create his own ordinance proposed from scratch and not looking at uh, Ashland's ordinance at all. And uh, there's a shocker, a 5G person. Uh, who who wants to be uh, wants special consideration and then uh, city uh, city attorney uh, uh, Doug McGeary yeah, he looks like this guy and then he says he goes you know I talked to that guy the 5G guy this morning and that guy is going to rewrite the ordinance from scratch and he goes my ordinance that I already wrote and proposed was fine but if you if you want to go and wait and wait for that nonsense from this snake oil salesman from New York is pitching that's your prerogative that's fine I I mean. Uh, I'm not, you know, whatever you want. January 3rd is when he said he'd have an update. And then public forum. Guess who's there? The shorter 5G lady. She says, uh, you know, there's this 15 story high cell tower in Jackson County at the old Billings Ranch. And uh, don't let Ashland become an electronic jungle. Uh, tech doesn't care about Christmas or children. And then a, a gray guy, hair, jacket guy showed up and goes, hey, I, I'm a tech guy with kids and I care about Christmas and children. So I just want to say that uh, there was a study in 2014 that said 75% of new home buyers said cell reception was important to their buying decision, as opposed to 60% saying schools are important. So let's just calm down with the 5G nonsense. And then the original 5G lady, she says, ah, the electrosensitive feel powerless. The cell tower at Billings Ranch is bad and ugly, and actually is not LA or New York. And then the consent agenda, this one goes, hey, both the issues on the consent agenda, uh, the budget audit report and the fee discussion need more time to discuss let alone rushing them through on this consent agenda. And this one actually says, I agree. Uh, one report is like uh, 190 pages. And then uh, me, this is me. I'm just saying this to you. I didn't say it in the meeting. I was just saying, like, so it's just a reminder. Consent agenda is supposed to be a place where um, boring, run-of-the-mill council approvals are put that council approves as an expected course of business. And sometimes there's good reasons to bring uh, them up for extra questions. But in Ashland, Every time is a time to ask questions. So just so you know, so we're asking questions. And the uh, oh, the assistant city attorney, the person who uh, wrote the budget, said she said is here to talk about it. And uh, this one goes, oh, that's great. Let's that, we should talk to that auditor person. And uh, this one goes, uh, ah, we also need more time. And then uh, uh, th this one goes, she goes, hey, uh, this I get in front of the camera. There, there you go. Hey, uh, this situation makes me want a counselor to propose a resolution that big reports like this don't show up like this at the last minute. So let's talk about this later in the meeting. I'm not sure why, but now the entire consent agenda discussion was postponed to the end of the meeting. And then uh, 
the airport uh, taxiway repaving contract, public works guy, Scott Flurry. Oh, God, oh, I forgot Scott Flurry's picture. He looks like Miss, he's got a beard. Anyway, so uh, it's, like, it's like this, but with a beard. Okay, so, so uh, he says, uh, we have grants for this work and the extra 140,000 is covered in the airport budget. And then he says, I approve. I, I believe we should approve this, and it was all approved. And then the second reading of the 16-acre uh, access of uh, annexation of the 230 new apartments north end of town between the 99 and the railroad tracks, and uh, the planning department head, uh, Brandon Gibbons, he looks just like this guy. He says, uh, he goes, I remember that report you heard last meeting? Yeah, same thing. Uh, with clarifications that any questions by any jerk or their jerk rogue organization have been found to be jerk questions. And this guy goes, he goes, hey, uh, uh, he goes, he goes, if this gets appealed, appealed, are you confident we will win? And then this guy goes, ah, the staff and planning commissions have double checked and any jerk can appeal. We are confident that all jerks who appeal will lose their actual appeal. And uh, then this guy goes, well, then I move to approve. And then this one goes, like, ah, well, I've never really chimed in on this issue uh, before because it seemed politically sensitive. Now that it's happening, I want to say how much I love this housing project, you know, like a pandering politician might do. All approved. And then, uh, now, oh, 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 back to the consent agenda. Here we're back again. It was delayed for no reason. And uh, first, the fees report. Uh, assistant city manager, who doesn't get a picture yet. Doesn't get a picture. Uh, she says, uh, uh, this is normal fee structure stuff. And uh, this one says, uh, fees aren't going up. They're just adding psilocybin to the cannabis language. And other fees are just uh, clarified. And uh, to be fair, actually, I, I looked at it. And, and there are some airport fees going up. Uh, but let's face it, if you own a freaking airplane, uh, you can probably afford higher fees. And then uh, this one said, uh, uh, this one says, uh, hey, this says, hey, hey, where do these fees go? And the assistant city manager says, uh, well, different places. And then this one goes, uh, here she is. She goes, hey, uh, there are lots of small fees I have questions about that seem insignificant, but they do add up. And that's why we should get these documents sooner. Can I email suggestions? Assistant city manager says, sure. She says, move to approve. All approved. That's nice. And then the annual budget audit report. Uh, so the woman re re representing the company that did this odd yearly budget report started a PowerPoint presentation. I know, so it's PowerPoint. So most people fell asleep at this minute. And then, uh, so she said, this is the fifth year our company has audited Ashland. And uh, if your internal patch controls were bad, we'd look at that, obviously. And then long-term debt and accrued liabilities, blah, 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 blah. Did you follow the four basic uh, state and federal reporting standards? We declare that you did. This is an audit report. And it says that your budget report people didn't lie, cheat, or were lazy. And so that's all this was. And then this one goes, uh, I won't vote for it because we only had 11 days to look at it. And uh, this one says, hey, how great is Ashland in budget audits? I mean, we're the best, right? And the auditor went, I'm, I'm not really certain what you mean. And he goes, he goes, would you give us like an A plus or, or an A? And she goes, well, sure, I'll give you an A. I mean, fine. And then, and then this one goes, this one goes, hey, how close was our ending balance to uh, uh, the predicted ending balance? We were great at that compared to other cities, right? And the uh, auditor went, I mean, I, we didn't check on that. And then this one goes, she goes, hey, uh, uh, we did some awesome work with our ARPA funds, right? And the auditor went, well, I mean, I would have done it different, but you were fine. And then this one says, let me ask you like three more really smart questions sounding. And so she, okay, all right, here's what I'm gonna do. Time for some gym splaining. That's like mansplaining, but for me, Jim, I'm not 100% certain why, but these counselors seem pretty desperate for this independent auditor to tell them that Ashland's budget was better than other cities. It was desperately desperate. What was really going on here is this, I believe. A faction of counselors does not want a forensic audit that is being proposed by another faction. So this faction thinks that this audit report we just got proves that the city budget doesn't need any more scrutiny. The reason the auditor didn't really confirm for them how great Ashland's budget accounting is was because this report is just an audit of the city budget reporting process, just a report on the compliance with the state process. They specifically say at the end of the report that this is, quote, not to provide an opinion on the effectiveness of the city's internal control or compliance, unquote. It's pass-fail, and Ashland gets a pass. A real audit, a forensic audit, would determine if all departments and funds were spending their individual budgets wisely, efficiently, or appropriately. 
a comprehensive forensic audit is still an important thing that would inform future budget discussions. <laughs> Jim's planning done. Okay, so then this one goes, uh, where's this one goes? This one goes, hey, uh, I've heard governments shouldn't use the same auditor year after year. What do you think? And the auditor went, I think they should. <laughs> okay, well, <laughs> surprise. And then this uh, city manager, Joe Lassard, said, we need to submit this approval for this audit report by December 31st to keep it from affecting our credit rating. A discussion about specific budget items should be on a separate, and I'll set that up in a study session. And then this guy goes, I move, we accept the report. And this one said, this one says, uh, let me say some more important things. And then it was approved four to one. She says no, she did not accept it, but it was accepted. End of meeting, you're welcome. <laughs>